Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dan salam Jumaat Okay, I am going to share with you today One of the case Which is difficult to manage But every surgical candidate Will have to go through this page Type of cases, and you have to be patient in managing this kind of case. We call it enterocutaneous fistula. Okay, enterocutaneous fistula, as the name suggests, there is entero and cutaneous. In between, there is fistula. So, what is fistula? Fistula is a tract eh? lined by epithelial line surface of that two cavities. All right. Entero means intestine, cutaneous means skin. So you can see there is a discharge or opening at the skin which is fistulated from the colon or intestines out. Okay, when this thing can happen, okay, it can be due to disease process, which can cause happen spontaneously or it can be as a result of iatrogenic or injury due to post-operative complications so disease process patient can have spontaneous fistula from cancerous lesion eh? intestinal cancer colon cancer or inflammatory bowel disease which is quite common in ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or in tuberculosis inflammatory conditions or in any other uh, pathology eh? any other pathology okay in iatrogenic or as a result of post-operative complications patient can have fistula uh, from the operative wound itself when they give away in the anastomosis or they can have fistula due to iatrogenic injuries common happen when patient perform adhesiolysis release of adhesions or uh, collateral damage because of unforeseen circumstances during surgery so when we do surgery there is accidental preparation to other parts of the bowel when it lo uh, left unnoticed by the operating surgeons so that is a bit about uh, introductions so how this patient presented Usually, the common presentation is patient come with inflame wound, post-operative wound. Uh, usually happen one or two weeks after surgery. There is signs of inflammation of the post-operative wound, and then discharging pus, and then subsequently you can see fecal contents comes out from the opening from the wound breakdowns. This is very typical. This is very typical. So this is very typical for the case of post-operative complications. Those who come with uh, disease process, they come with straight opening at the cutaneous and discharging some fecal materials. So presentation of the patient with enterocutaneous fistula can be very devastating. They can be just uh, discharging fecal matter from the cutaneous or they can go into very septic conditions with uh, very bad skin excoriation and skin involvement so what is the principles of management okay in surgery general surgery or colorectal this actually uh, is one of the most challenging case that need to be deals with patients and properly eh? and then uh, depends on the type of fistula uh, the principles of management is I think everybody knows and eh, who are sitting for postgraduate or undergraduate but you still have, can use this uh, acronym 4R SNAP 4R SNAP so the first R is resuscitations. Second R is restitutions. Okay. The third R is 
reconstructions and for its rehabilitation. Alright? Alright. What is snap? Snap mean skin. Okay. And S, another S is sepsis. N is nutrition. A is anatomy. And P is plan. So how we incorporate these two for our snaps? Okay, in all cases of enterocutaneous fistula, the first, the principal manager number one is resuscitation. So during resuscitation, when you receive the patient, this R must be incorporated with snap. So these are simultaneously or being managed together. All right, R is managed together with snaps. So you have to see because enterocutaneous fistula it can come from small bowel and there will be a lot of high output fistula and patient can be severely dehydrated. Okay, CAC6. Okay, so you have to monitor patients, look for evidence of severe dehydration. Yes. So you have to put an IV drip. And then number two, you have to see the urine output. So research the patient, fluids resuscitation. And then during that resuscitation, you have to take care of the wound, the skin. This is equally important. Eh? This is equally important to the resuscitation. So don't bother about operation. Don't bother about where the fistula comes. What you need just resuscitation and skin care. So you have to take care of the skin. Put a proper stomach bag. Protect the area of the skin. Because this bowel content, especially bile, small bowel are very irritant to the skin and can cause severe wound escorations. Huh? Okay, then another S is sepsis. So seldom, uh, not so unfrequent. If the fistula partially out and partially goes into the abdomen, they can form collection. Patient can come with fever and collection in the abdomen. They can come with severe sepsis. So you have to tackle the sepsis. Start it start patient on antibiotics do quick imaging to look for any collections CT scan will do and if it is drainable you should subject this patient for CT scan guided drainage of the collections we try to avoid operation at the very early stage eh? because it is associated with high mobility and mortality okay so for our first resuscitation, research the resuscitation, the fluid resuscitation, look for the electrolytes, eh? uh, look for the patient's weight in the first place, take care of the skin, look for the sepsis. So settle that part, okay, look for the, all the investigations, blood urea, zinc, magnesium, potassium, and patient albumin, okay, and patient albumin. Okay, during your resuscitation, then come restitution, you must monitor the patient fistula output. So fistula can be divided into high output or low output. So anything above 500 ml per day is considered high output. Usually high output results from the small bowel, duodenum, duodenum, from proximal, the part. Eh? And low output less than 500 why we need to do, know this okay after a few days a week you monitor and you see the trend of the outputs then only you can classify this as high output or low output fistula so after you take care of the patient hydration you'll you take care of the patient skin stoma and then you monitor the patient output you are doing a great initial job okay you are doing great initial jobs all right okay then come into principle of management okay it will give you idea whether this fistula can close by its own spontaneously or the fistula will never close so what are the criteria of the fistula that can close by its own without any surgical intervention. Okay, number one is low output fistula. Okay, um, it's anything less than 500 and degrees in pattern. Number two, we are not dealing with 
malignant fistulas or inflammatory fistulas all right number three there shouldn't be any distal obstruction so we have to ascertain and do some colonoscopy or citizen to find out whether the distal to the fistula is there any obstruction addition obstruction by malignancy or what so we have to ascertain there is no distal obstruction number four the length of the fistula tract the longer the length the higher chances of the fistula to get obliterated and closed by its own the shorter the fistula for example the skin this is the bowel no chance of fistula to close so if you if patient fit into this criteria we can actually hope for the fistula to be closed and all these patients should be put on TPN for certain period eh? at least three to four weeks or even six weeks straight no eh, nil by mouth okay TPN straight nil by mouth okay uh, that is our snap eh? skin setter nutrition okay before the idea I want to tell you the fistula you have been shown in literature 90% of the fistula, fistula which close continuously happen within one month huh? the rest 10% of a 10 or a second or third months if the fistula a certain close within three months the fistula will not going to close okay all right okay then we go skin sepsis settle nutrition okay nutrition is very important eh? we have to get multi modalities multidisciplinary approach we should have rehabilitation department we should have pharmacist we should have stoma care we should have good dedicated nurse eh? we should have dietitians icu people and those people uh, yeah who are uh, expert in this so nutrition wise we have to make sure the patient uh, electrolytes all those elements uh, are being replaced properly and the albumin level should be C because very important pharmacy to know whether this is high output or low output because it's just low output the amount of protein need to be replaced is just 1.5 to 2 times of the normal people eh? including the vitamin C and all those things but if it is high output you need 4 times to 10 times uh, the concentration of these trace elements and all those things ok so nutrition is important if you plan to treat the patient keep the patient in by mouth I mean if you aim to get this thing closed continuously for a period of 4 to 6 months so I said again multidisciplinary approach the counseling also important because patient will be depressed so you need psychiatrist to come and counsel the patients eh, and give them uh, strength to overcome these problems you might have very important discipline approach okay then you have settled the nutrition then we go to a anatomy so after you settle resuscitation patient is well not dehydrated the skin care is taken care, the stoma has been nicely placed and then you have decided this is low or high output fistula then you have to delineate the cause so you get CT scan anatomy, you find the anatomy or you can get fistulogram through that opening so you see where the fistula originated from okay, by means of colonoscope or CT scan or fistulograms once you have certain the diagnosis you go by the principle like i mentioned just now high output or low output and, and decide from there okay in case the fistula never going to close so there is a rule of operative surgery reconstruction so resuscitation resuscitation reconstruction and rehabilitation rehabilitation like i mentioned stoma care physio all those things eh? uh, rehabilitation so reconstruction part you are not going to do that within the first three months or six months nowadays 
because the chances that you create another enterocutaneous fistula are high. The chances that you create more injuries are high because of fibrosis, because of the nature of the disease and eh, the process. So the reconstruction, even now, the current trend, they go later, even after one year. Eh? Because the objective is the surgeon must make sure they can they can establish continuity of the bowel if they want to go in for the next time. Number two, they must have the objective of not creating another fistula or injuries. And number three, the operation itself must result in improvement in the management of the wound. If you have all that in your mind, then you can go in. But most of us will not go in too early, right? For this, for that, if, uh, that catastrophe event where you can create more fistula, you can create more injury, you can create, create more harm to the patients. So we leave it later. The reconstructions. So that is a bit basic lah about management of the cutaneous fistula. Eh? Uh, the most important is you must resuscitate for heart snap, skin, nutrition, anatomy, and plan. So the plan is based on all these fundamentals. Alright, thank you. It is Friday. I hope you benefit from my uh, short presentation. This might be just 5 to 10 percent of the knowledge about anterocutaneous fistula. You can go and read again, read the journal, read the latest uh, update. But this is just very basic thing for the new surgical residents or even the junior master students on how to approach the enterocutaneous fistula. Alright, thank you. Awesome.